Welcome back. Today we are uh, doing a deep dive into a professional licensing exam that's suddenly at the center of two, well, two very different storms. We're talking about the North American Veterinary Licensing Examination, the and AVL. Exactly. If you're a vet or you want to be one, this exam is basically the final gatekeeper. And right now, that gatekeeper is under fire. Big time. On one side, you have these incredibly serious allegations of uh, racially motivated score manipulation, systemic fraud even. All laid out in a pre-litigation document. And then uh, completely separate from that, you have this this bizarre story about an AI supposedly getting a perfect score on the test. Right. So our goal today is to really break down the source materials you shared. We have the document itself. Hmm. We have the discussions going on in professional forums. And of course, the official statements from the key players. And let's be clear about who those players are. You've got the ICDA, yeah. the International Council for Veterinary Assessment. Mm. They're the ones who run the exam. Then the AVMA, the American Veterinary Medical Association, which handles accreditation for the schools. And then you have the NBME, the National Board of Medical Examiners, which kind of serves as the benchmark for how these tests should be run. So the real tension here, what we're digging into, is how this essential exam for clinical competency is being accused of being just, yeah. fundamentally broken and discriminatory. And the demands for transparency are being met with, from what our sources say, a flat-out refusal. This isn't just an academic thing. This is about people's lives, their careers. Their entire futures. Okay, so let's start with the most serious claims. The whole thing kicked off when this pre-litigation document started making the rounds on vet school campuses back in November 2025. And the language is, it's not subtle. It alleges racially motivated score manipulation and systemic fraud. Wow. The document outlines what it calls a really disturbing pattern. A disparity. A huge disparity. It argues that students of color, and it specifically calls out Spanish surnamed U.S. citizens and graduates from Tuskegee University, are just uh, failing the Navy L at a much higher rate. And the argument is that this isn't about their academic performance. Not at all. It says these candidates have great academic records. They do well on the practice tests. They study hard. The preparation is there. The numbers in the document are what really make you stop and think. They are. You look at most accredited vet programs in the U.S., and their pass rates are high. We're talking above 85 percent, sometimes close to 100. Right. And then you look at Tuskegee University, the only historically black veterinary school in the country. And their pass rate. It's been hovering around 50 percent. 50. That's not a gap. That's a chasm. It's a precipitous divergence, as the document calls it. And it demands an explanation. The timeline here is so important, too. The letter claims this huge split in pass rates, this this divergence between Tuskegee and other schools. It lines up almost perfectly with big changes made to the Navy L. In or after 2017. Right. Which suggests the problem might not be with the students or the schools, but with the test itself. Exactly. It points to a systemic issue. Yeah. And the human cost, uh, the document, really paints a picture of devastation. I can only imagine. It talks about clients who had job offers pulled, who were drowning in more debt, and the emotional toll, depression, even suicidal thoughts. After eight years of school and hundreds of thousands of dollars, to be stopped by a test you're told is biased against you. It's a staggering thought. So that leads us to the structure of the exam. The legal team says the system itself is what allows for this. What are the specific flaws they're pointing to? Well, they point to a lack of what you'd consider basic fundamental safeguards. Safeguards you'd see on other big professional exams. Precisely like the USMLE for doctors or the NCLEX for nurses. The document says the Nevielli is missing a Polish technical manual. There's no independent audit of the scoring. Okay. And, and this is the big one. There's no use of something called differential item functioning analysis, DIF analysis. Okay, DIF analysis. That's a technical term, but it sounds really important. Break that down for us. What does it actually do? Absolutely. So DIF analysis is a statistical method. It's designed to find potential bias in specific test questions. Not just the overall score, but question by question. Exactly. It looks at test takers who have the same overall ability, say they both got 70% of the questions right, mm -hmm. but are from different demographic groups, race, gender, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it checks if one group is getting a specific question wrong at a statistically higher rate. If they are, it flags that question for review. Because it might be measuring something other than, you know, veterinary knowledge. It might be measuring cultural background or some language nuance by mistake. And for an exam this important, 
not having that check in place, mm -hmm. it kind of leaves the door wide open to accusations of unfairness. So that's a huge structural hole. The document also talks about opaque scaling. What does that mean for someone taking the test? Opaque scaling means you have no idea how your raw score, the number of questions you got right, is turned into a pass or a fail. It's a black box. It's a total black box. In a transparent system, they tell you how they set the passing score. Here, it feels like it could change any time for any reason. So you have a system without proper checks and a scoring process nobody understands. That's the structural argument. But then it gets even worse. It does. The document includes claims of uh, explicit intentional misconduct. This is the part that is just shocking. It is. There's a whistleblower account from a senior veterinarian. This person claims a naval grader was heard bragging about failing candidates of color. And the quote is? The quote is chilling. I will keep the brown ones out. Wow. <laughs> and that specific claim gives context to other things in the letter, like anecdotal stories of Spanish surname candidates being told by friends to change their names on the application. Just to avoid that kind of bias. To avoid being flagged. So if you put it all together, the claim is that the problem is both the system itself, a flawed exam, and the people within it acting with uh, intentional bias. That's the argument. Mm -hmm. And so the law firm's demands are pretty straightforward. They want a meeting, they want fixes, and most of all, they want a completely independent external audit of all the NAVIL data. And the response from the ICBA? According to our sources, they've refused that independent audit. And that refusal is really at the heart of the conflict now. Okay, now we have to be fair and look at the other side. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of professionals, veterinarians, testing experts who have read this document and are um, skeptical. Right. And their counterpoints are important to understand. Their main point seems to be that the legal team just doesn't understand how standardized testing works. That's a big part of it. For example, the letter points to the fact that different people get different questions on the same day as if it's proof of a flaw. But that's standard practice, isn't it? It's totally standard. Exams like the ACT or the GRE do it all the time. They use multiple versions of the test to prevent cheating. By itself, that's not evidence of anything shady. Okay, what about the content complaints? The letter mentions questions about camels or sharks as being outside the scope. Yeah, we can check that directly. If you look at the Naval's own public blueprint... It's in there. It's absolutely in there. Aquatics and camelids are fair game. It's a small part of the exam, maybe a handful of questions, but you're expected to know it. So claiming it's outside the blueprint is likely just inaccurate. And then there's the classic complaint from every test taker ever about crappy questions. Right. And there's a mechanical explanation for that, too. The Naval uses tester questions. Questions that don't count towards your score. Exactly. They're experimental items they're trying out for future exams. So if you get a really weird or badly worded question, it might just be one of those. The problem is you don't know which ones they are. And there's also the whole one best answer thing, which makes these tests so tricky. Yes. This isn't just about memorizing facts. Many questions might have a few options that are technically correct. But you have to pick the best one. You have to apply clinical judgment. And that's a different skill. It's why, as people have pointed out online, really smart people, really talented clinicians can and do fail the Nivele. Good grades don't guarantee a pass. It's also worth noting this isn't just a Tuskegee problem. The pass rates have dipped at other schools since 2020. That's true, though Tuskegee's numbers are still a stark outlier. Right. And you have to remember the other context here. Tuskegee has a whole separate lawsuit filed against the AVMA, the accrediting body. Oh, that's right. They're claiming they didn't get a fair hearing over their accreditation status. So there's clearly a lot of friction between Tuskegee and uh, the profession's regulatory bodies in general. So the whole system is under pressure from multiple directions. It really is. Okay, let's pivot now. Because while all of this incredibly serious stuff was going on, the ICVA also had to deal with something, well, something much weirder. The AI story. The AI story. So in November 2025, a new company, an AI platform called OpenVet, puts out a press release. And it makes this huge claim. A huge claim. It said its AI got a perfect 100% score on the naval. Which would be, you know, an incredible marketing tool if it were true. If it were true. The ICVA's response was fast. It was immediate and total. They just said false. They clarified the naval is a secure, proctored exam. No AI ever took it. Right. And the questions aren't public, so how could an AI even train on them, let alone get a perfect score? It's functionally impossible. 
and the outcome. OpenVet pulled the press release from everywhere. It just vanished. Very strange, kind of distracting sideshow to the much more serious issues. So if we try to tie all these different threads together, mm -hmm. where does that leave us? I mean, it leaves us with an exam, the Naval E, that is defined right now by a real lack of transparency. You have these structural weaknesses, like the absence of a DIF analysis, and these incredibly serious documented allegations of bias. And all that is happening while they're also dealing with the normal challenges of running a high-stakes test, plus these bizarre PR stunts. It's a perfect storm, in a way. The ICVA has made some small changes. They updated the retake policy to five attempts in five years. Right. But that's a policy tweak. It doesn't get at the fundamental issue of trust and transparency that the pre-litigation document brought to light. And it really leaves us with a final thought for you, the listener, to consider. Yeah. If the ICVA continues to refuse this request for a truly independent psychometric audit, especially something like a DIF analysis, what does that do long term? What's the impact on the diversity of the veterinary profession and on the trustworthiness of the whole pipeline? What's the real cost of this kind of opacity?